This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for January 21, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, Jamaican man gets a 20-year prison sentence for killing girlfriend in the U.S. A man charged with killing his living girlfriend in 2018, then fleeing to Jamaica where he evaded authorities for nearly two years, pleaded guilty on Friday to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. Leroy Headley, 41, had originally pleaded not guilty in connection with the shooting death of a Nako Annette Lomomba in the South Burlington home they shared with their two children. Headley apologized in court, saying he was deeply and truly sorry for killing Lomomba and described her as his best friend and soulmate. Many members of Lomomba's family as well as her friends were in court. For us, we just have to, I guess, carry on her legacy and be a family, Adolf Lomomba, the victim's brother, told WCAX TV. On May 3, 2018, authorities received a 911 call from a man who stated, I shot her, I shot her, and gave the address of the South Burlington home according to a police affidavit. The phone was registered to Headley, police said. Headley's car was found May 18, 2018 in Albany, New York. The U.S. Marshals Service said he had ties to Jamaica, where he was originally from, and across the U.S. and Canada. He was arrested by Jamaican authorities February 5, 2020 in Negril, officials said. He was brought back to Vermont where he entered a plea of not guilty and was ordered held without a bail. St. James a bus driver charged with rape A St. James a bus operator has been charged following his alleged rape of a 15-year-old passenger on Richmond Hill Road in the parish on October 16. He is 52-year-old Herman Atkinson of Richmond Hill Road. The teenager reportedly boarded a bus being operated by Atkinson, but later became the only passenger in the vehicle after others arrived at their destinations. Atkinson allegedly sped past her stop and went to a house on Richmond Hill Road where he lifted her from the vehicle, took her inside and sexually assaulted her. He then reportedly transported her halfway home telling her to walk the rest of the journey. A report was made to the police and an investigation launched. Atkinson was arrested on January 12 and later interviewed and charged. Curfews imposed in three Manchester crime hotspots The Manchester police have imposed the curfews in the communities of Atlantis Settlement, Comfort and Broadleaf ahead of the funeral of a man they say was a violence producer in the parish. The curfew, which came into effect on Friday at 6 p.m., will remain in place until 8 a.m. Monday. Deputy Superintendent in charge of operations, Colin Johnson, said apart from the areas recording a murder, gang feuds and several robberies, there is no heightened tension for possible reprisal killings ahead of Saturday's funeral. The violence producer, Marlon Irving, also called Muta, who was killed on December 6, will be buried today. There is high tension not just for that murder last year, but a murder this year, he explained. Johnson said only persons with a proper identification and a proof of their need to be on the road during curfew hours will be allowed to do so by the ground commander. The crowd at today's funeral will be curtailed. Shops will be allowed to open until 6 p.m. today, but no large gatherings will be allowed. He said there will be heavy patrol by members of the police and the military in all the communities. Police close to charging Jean and Panton The police have disclosed that, that they are closer to laying charges against Jean and Panton, a former manager at the Stocks and the Securities Limited. Investigators from the Police of Fraud Squad and the Financial Investigations Division seized the documents and electronic devices during Friday's search of two premises connected to Ms. Panton. They confirmed that she would be taken in for questioning with a view to lay charges. Panton's attorney, Tamika Harris, speaking with the news after the searches, said the officers were professional, though she described the experience as somewhat traumatic. 
Investigators were called in last week to probe a major fraud scheme at SSL. More than 40 investors have been fleeced of nearly 1 billion Jamaican dollars in one of the largest fraud rackets on record in Jamaica. Private sector urged to follow government's lead in renegotiating security contracts. Private sector companies are being encouraged to follow the government's lead to renegotiate contracts with security firms. This comes after Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, announced that, that the government has established a task force to re-examine the more than 500 contracts for the supply of security services at ministries, departments and agencies. The task force has been given 100 days for the completion of the negotiations with the new contracts to take effect April 1. Dr. Clark says that private companies that fail to follow the example being set by the government should be exposed. Once sufficient time has passed for adjustments to be made, private firms that wish to have the services of security guards but who fail to amend or enter into contracts that allow security guards to be treated as employees, in my view, ought to be named and shamed. The Jamaica Society for Industrial Security has described as a good first step the establishment of the task force to amend the government contracts with security firms. JSIS President Lieutenant Commander George Overton said this initiative will allow... If we were to abide by the public procurement rules, all the contracts would have to be terminated, retendered, revaluated, and renegotiated. What he has done here allows for the government contracts to have continuity as they, 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 they increase is certainly more than what the rules allow. 15% is a variation that you can have under the PPC rules. So we now have continuity and assurance of continued service um, with the government and for the government. Private sector at the end of the day can just raise their prices without thinking of the consequences. So if, if there are private sector firms and users of security services who genuinely cannot afford and cannot adjust their rates or goods to meet the costs, then there, there may be fallout. We are concerned about it. Supreme Court puts hold on bauxite mining close to a section of cockpit country. An order has been made by the Supreme Court for Naranda Jamaica Bauxite Partners II and the New Day Aluminum Jamaica Limited not to start or continue any mining at a location close to the cockpit country in St. Anne in relation to Special Mining Lease 173. The injunction is to remain in force until a constitutional claim brought by several residents in the area is heard. Nine residents have taken the bauxite companies to court claiming that bauxite mining in the area has breached their constitutional rights. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.